exceedingly, abundantly, above all, all you could ask or think, according to the power that is working in you, you, God is able to do just what he said he would do, he's gonna fulfill every prize. Must to you. Don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. He's able. Just wanted to tell somebody that today I don't have no voice. Y'all hear me? I am all preached out. I'm coming out of two revivals. Um, the first night I preached, and the second night um, Bishop preached. Bishop here at the city preached, and I tell you, as I finished, Hallelujah and thank you Jesus and honorable whole shot and all of that good stuff. Honey, this is what I am left with. So, I'm all dressed up because I'm on my way to some women's conference and see what I have right now. I probably won't have that much. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm all dressed up. Let me see. Do y'all see this little bit, little outfit? I'm into the ruffles right now. So, the only problem is I can't find enough of them. So if y'all know somewhere that like has these ruffle tops, let me know. Anyway, uh, why do I like them? I like them because they're modest and they're real cute. Because you know, women of God, we don't have all our grace and mercy out. Praise God. So you can be safe and sassy. I ain't worried about being sexy, honey, because, you know, that's for the married folk. And even though I got a whole lot of pretty rings, ain't none of them a wedding ring. So we'll save the sexy for the married folks. And we'll save the sassy for me. Hey. So anyway, it's a beautiful Saturday. The sun is shining and I'm about to go out and uh, do what I do. Enjoy this conference. I'm not preaching at it. I'm just going to support it. And sometimes we need to support stuff that we're not participating in. I'm not down the scene. I ain't down to have no words of encouragement, no talk. Oh, nothing. I'm just there to, I'm just going to just relax and enjoy the presence of the Lord. And uh, every time I get an opportunity to do that, I do. But those opportunities are rare because most of the time I'm the one up that's preaching or singing or doing something or actually hosting the conference. So, what are you doing this weekend? Pray that somewhere in that you have made room and made space to give God the glory and to give God the honor just for the simple fact of bringing you through the week and bringing you through, um, you know, challenges. Because every week brings its own set of challenges. So um, this is a quick hello, and um, I'm grateful for all of you. Now, um, I want to talk about some stuff that I'm seeing happening in the body of Christ. And uh, it was actually touched on last night by Bishop. It was a shout out to Bishop Bailey. God bless you. Um, the spirit of discord in the body of Christ. And I know y'all say, well, it's, it's always existed. That's nothing new, Apostle. I mean, that's just how it's going to be with church folk. Well, I want to say this. Don't let it just be with you. Okay? You know, a, a, a way that you can stop this spirit of discord from spreading? Learn how to do this. You ready? You know how they used to do the little kids at kindergarten? Everybody put your finger on your mouth. Don't say nothing. And you know what? The spirit of discord has become so cunning and so crafty. And let me tell you what it does. 
it disguises itself in prayer requests. Oh, child, pray for Pastor so and so, cause you know they say, and then everything after that is not a prayer request at all. It's just taking the opportunity to just tell all their business, and you know you're not gonna pray. Um, another way the spirit of discord is spread. <laughs> Unfortunately, over the pulpit. And I like to say it like this. There are 66 books of the Bible to preach for. Why do you make people your subject? No. If you want to talk about people, let's talk about John and James and Mark and Luke and the disciples and the apostles and Mary and Martha and Lydia and Rachel. Let's talk about them. Why talk about one another? So, although this has been happening, I want you to make a conscious effort not to let it happen with you. I don't care how true, I'm coming close, I don't care how true you think it is. You know, people have said, think, said things about me, and because I refuse to comment on it, they say, well, it must be true because if it wasn't true, you know, she'll be the first one to say something about it. But God is really teaching me, and he's really growing me up. And he's helping me to understand you can't stop folk from talking. You can't stop folk from gossiping. You can't stop folk from assuming. Let them go right ahead, but that's not your problem. And you just continue to be who it is that you are. And anyone that is meant to be in your life, I, somebody needs to hear this today. Anybody that is meant to be in your life, I don't care who comes along to try to block it. God will make sure that that person will be in your life. And now don't you mess it up by going. And just tap, 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 tap. And you don't even know. Especially those of us, and i got to say this, those of us who are on social networks, we look at a few pictures, we look at a few flyers, talk to a few folks, and we think we know people personally. Baby, you don't know. So instead of assuming, because see, a lot of this, what we're calling discernment, it's not discernment, it's speculation. It's assumption. And it's assumption and you don't even know. So that's my little spiel today. And I'm going to support the kingdom of God. Amen. We got to learn how to break out our, our little shells and our little comfort zone. I say we. Because, you know, I enjoy the fellowship that I have. I enjoy my sisters and brothers in the Lord. But it just so happens that they're all busy today doing their ministries. Or it is a Saturday taking care of their personal stuff. And I'm going by myself. And that's not something that I always like to do. I like to have my people with me. So, you know, we can shout together and praise God together and go out and get something to eat after it's over. But today, I'm being a big girl. I'm breaking out of my comfort zone. And I'm going to go and extend the hand of fellowship. Y'all not clapping for me because y'all don't really know me for real. But can I let you in on something? I'm not always um, willing or excited about um, going out and trying new things. I like my little space. And not a whole lot of folk can come to my inner space. And that's for a reason. Because folk are crazy. But today, I'm going to go and I'm going to fellowship. And I just believe that God is going to bless me. I'm not saying I may be best of friends or, you know, we're going to go out and have milk and cookies after it's over. But this year I told myself that I would not be afraid to form new connections. 
So, that's what I'm going to go to. And I pray that you enjoy. Hey, you know, I, I got to say this. I got to say this. I almost missed this connection. Yeah. I almost missed it. You want to know why? And you know what? One day, I said, you know what? Because I, I know it was the Spirit of God. I said, you know what? I'm going to just pick up the phone. And I'm going to call this person myself. And we got to talking. And we got to talking about the goodness of Jesus. And we got to just talking about ministry. And you know, I said, you know what? You're a new pastor. And some of us who have been in ministry for a little while, you know, we, we can be real funny with each other. And it's a shame. But there was someone that was working overtime trying to uh, make a bad name for this pastor before she even got started good. And she said, you know what, Apostle? She said, you know, you're the first person who has called me. Everybody else has just suspected and sh 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 did you hear? And did you know? And I heard. And when we got down to talking, we realized that things were not like we thought they were. And I believe God's going to get the glory. Okay? So I just want to challenge you to do that. It happens in all walks of life. It happens in the workplace. If there's a certain co-worker that nobody likes or that everybody got something to say, pray about whether or not the Lord wants you to be the one to make the difference. If it's a certain church member, those of you all who are not in leadership, but you love the Lord and, and in the fellowship with the local church and just a certain church member that don't nobody understand, can't nobody figure out, everybody has something to say, why don't you show mercy and grace and go to that person and find out who it is that they really are. Now, after you find out, you ain't got to make it your business to broadcast, you know what, it's just like they said, she ain't no, no. Just pray. And I'm learning how to say. Yes, I see it, but yes, I heard it, but yes, I know it, but what's your opinion? How you feel about it? Because I'm going to pray. And that's a challenge for all of us. All right? Let's work on it. So, I'm going out. I'm going to make the best day possible for me. And I want you to enjoy Jesus. All this joy. And thank you for making ministry possible. Love y'all. Bye.